Hi guys and welcome back to Top Speed Golf. I'm Clay Ballard and I got a really cool, really interesting video for y'all today. You're used to listening to Frank Navalo on TV as an announcer announcing golf tournaments and hearing him talk about the golf swing and what the players are going through. One thing we may forget is that Frank is an unbelievably good player. I actually exchanged a few emails back and forth with him over the last few days. Super, super nice guy and a really good golfer. He demonstrates the five keys to the top speed golf system really, really well. We're gonna go over his swing, talk about how this can give you more accuracy, more distance, and you can start playing like this PJ Tour winner and five-time European Tour winner. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so one of the first things we'll take a look at is what we call the stable fluid spine. That's making sure that you're nice and consistent and not moving around a lot over top of the golf ball. So you can draw a line right from your belt buckle up to your, your sternum or the center of your chest, and that should be tilted slightly away from the target. You can also see that this matches up with the inside of his left leg. So he's basically demonstrating this perfectly at a dress position. And a good key for you guys that may be wanting to work on this is if you can imagine your nose, if you draw a line down from your nose, having that a little bit behind the golf ball is gonna put you into a really good setup position it's going to allow you to be nice and consistent. Now, as he swings to the top, he's making a good full rotation away from the ball, and we can see that he's loading up on his right side. So one thing that is a little bit of a misconception out there is that we want to keep the head perfectly still in the backswing and the downswing. We'll see that his nose is moved to the right about four or five inches, and that's, that's perfectly fine. You're going to see most good players, as they load up onto the right side, their head is going to rotate a little bit to the right, and their weight is going to shift to the right and it's perfectly okay to have your your nose or the center of your head kind of move to the right going back and he's in a really good position here too if we draw a line down from his nose here we can see that it's on the inside of his right foot and that's just demonstrating that he's gotten a good weight shift to his right side we'll also see if we drew a spine angle that it's pretty consistent as to what we saw at address so he's not getting a lot of swaying or shifting even though he is getting a weight transfer to the right as he starts in the downswing as he shifts to the left we're gonna see this spine angle increase very slightly coming through contact. So this will be about the closest frame we can get to contact. And now if we draw that line kind of from the center of the hips just to try to match up the spine angle again, we're gonna see that there is a weight shift to the left, but these three lines from setup, top of the backswing, impact, and even all the way into the finish are really, really consistent and not moving around all over the place. And now you can see that his nose, if you drew a line from there, is gonna finish basically centered over the, the front of his left foot. So really, really good, nice swing. He's letting his weight shift both to the right and then to the left in the downswing, but not getting a lot of extra movement. Now the second thing we'll talk about, which is really key to getting distance for any type of player, is making sure that we get loaded up. And one of the things that I actually preferred in some of the, the modern day swings are really getting into like a hip restriction type move, which I think hurts your power. It makes you feel tighter, and especially for players out there that aren't as flexible, really really start restricting the hips and it limits your shoulder turn so we're seeing here we're probably getting frank's probably getting i would say a 55 degree hip turn if i had to put a number on it you can see how the left leg is nice and loose this is something that's kind of you know i guess i would say has gotten a little bit out of style with tiger woods you know keeping the, the left leg moving more toward the target going back but i like this motion because it allows the hips to rotate nice and freely and you're going to feel like you're wound up but you're not just extremely extremely tight so if you feel bound up in the backswing it's okay to let your hips rotate a little bit more it's okay to relax this left leg slightly i mean if it's good enough for for ben hogan it's probably going to be okay uh, for us too or players like jack nicholas also but we can see here as he goes back 55 degree hip turn as i mentioned the shoulder turn is a little bit past 90 which is really really good Another key after loosening up the hips is to feel like I'm letting my left shoulder rotate back away from the target. I'm letting my right shoulder turn back toward the target. This is called protraction of the left shoulder, retraction of the right shoulder. We don't have to get too scientific with it. But if I can get that rotation, I'm really wound up and I have a lot of potential energy for the downswing. Now he's gonna start his downswing by letting his hips start to rotate back behind his body. So if you can kind of imagine the hips rotating back like this, we're gonna see him putting some pressure into that left leg as he starts down. So I'll play back and forth for that a few times. And you can see how those hips start to open up, the pressure goes into the left leg. And then as he continues all the way on through, he has a great finish. This is a textbook ideal finish position. Nice high chest, 
um, again the nose is over the front foot and you can see if I draw a line you know basically from the from the ankle to the center of the head that line is nice and, and, and straight just slightly leaning back and his, his chest is nice and high basically facing up down the fairway um, the hips are rotated through the fairway the, the, the shoulders themselves will actually be facing over to the left rough a little bit which is great so textbook ideal position there that's what we call the power turn in the system and that's what we recommend you guys are working on not only loading back but coming through so that's the second piece that we would focus on nice and stable good powerful turn now the third piece is lag and one of the things that I really like about his swing that I think is great for most people to imitate is to get these hands nice and high I've always been a, a kind of a proponent of a nice high hand position. You look at a lot of the power players out there, Jack Nicklaus, um, you know, modern day players, whether you're talking about Bubba Watson, who gets the hands extremely high, maybe a little bit um, more than ideal, getting him higher. Uh, but that's always good if you're struggling with some power. Get those hands nice and high. Feel like the wrists are nice and loose. So if we take this angle of this club, watch as he starts his downswing, his wrists are going to be nice and soft. And he's actually increasing that angle slightly in his wrist as he starts the downswing. So you can see that, that club is even tightening up a little bit. And as he comes in about when the left arm's parallel with the ground, now we can see how he has this great angle of lag built up. And again, that goes back to I'm letting my hips start to rotate as I begin the downswing. I'm very soft with my wrist and I'm actually feeling like I don't fully set my wrist. Get those nice high hands like we saw with his and don't feel like you fully set your wrist going back. Watch that, watch that club continue to hinge as he starts down as the wrists are nice and soft and we can see how he's setting that angle a little bit more. And then from there, once we get that really good angle of lag, once we've really loaded up this energy and we're, we're about parallel with the ground with our, with our left arm, now it's time to let it go. In this video, we can't see exactly where the, the straight line release is. For those of you who aren't familiar with this, what this basically means, uh, if we had a little clearer picture of the club, we'd be able to see this really easily. But the chest, if we were to draw a line kind of 45 degrees out in front in the release, he's taking all these big angles with the forearms in the club. So we'll go ahead and, and show the angles here. There's the club shaft, there's the forearms. As we go a couple more frames down, we can still see that he's starting to release this angle of the, the arms in the club. I'll try to go one more. There's about an impact. We still have a little bit of an angle. And then as he comes, I guess that's about right there. And then as he comes on through to the straight line release, he's letting all those angles go and letting all the energy from the club release out and through the golf ball to get all the speed uh, to let go. So a lot of times people think, well, I'm going to hold on to the shot. I'm going to feel like I get forward shaftling and drag the arms through. But really what we're doing is we're creating a sharp angle with the forearms in the club. And then we're letting that go. And with almost all professional players you're looking at, if you were to draw a line from the chest 45 degrees in front, you're going to see that club releasing right around in there, the angles between the forearm and the shaft releasing through there. And that's what allows you to get some speed. And again, that's a, I love the extension here. Look how the hands are nice and high. The club is, is, is vertical with the ground as he's coming on through, and these arms are really, really straight. That means he's releasing all that energy out through the, the ball, down the fairway, and letting that go. Now, last thing that we'll talk about here that, that fits with the top speed golf system is where he's at it, at impact with his body. So we'll see as he shifts to the left. One of the things that I see people do time and time again is they get too far left with their left hip, left ankle, left shoulder. Now with an iron, especially a shorter iron, if we were to draw a line from the left ankle to the left shoulder at impact, we should see the ankle, the hip, and the shoulder all stacked up. And you can basically see a vertical line with a shorter iron, maybe a, a pitching wedge to a you know an eight iron, something like that. The line's gonna be pretty vertical. As we go into a driver, since we wanna launch the ball a little bit higher, we want to have these angles slightly back, six or eight degrees. The best drivers in the world, your Roy McIlroy's, your Jason Day's, are going to be angled back to where that left shoulder is here, the left hip is here, and the left ankle is there. But all three of these need to be in a straight line, which he is demonstrating really, really well. And he's hitting an iron here. So we, we want to get these in a straight line. Now, one of the mistakes that I see people make a lot of times is that the shoulder will be you know, somewhere in this general vicinity. The ankle will be in that vicinity, but instead of the hip being right here, the hip gets bumped out a little bit toward the target, 
and you start to get this bowing action in the left side of the body. So the left hip will be up here, and if we were to draw that line, it's gonna look something more like this if we get the left ankle, left hip, left shoulder. That causes the body to kind of fall down like that. The right shoulder gets closer to the ground, and now you start to chunk some shots, or you start to, to raise up and hit some thin shots. And we're basically just losing our posture. So you can see nice and straight how straight he is here. That's gonna put him in a position to where he can go into that straight line release and release all the energy of the club out and through and hit a nice crisp iron shot. So fantastic looking swing, meets the five pieces of the top speed golf system really, really well, really good player. So uh, next time you're watching him broadcast on TV, realize just how good that swing was, incorporate some of these into your own game. I'll see you guys soon. All right guys, so I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. I got a great bonus video for you guys that are joining me on YouTube. So we know we have to create a lot of lag. We saw Frank creating a lot of lag in this swing. If we're gonna have good swing speed, we gotta get the lag and then we gotta let it go in the swing. And I got a video that goes over the number one lag mistake that I see time and time again. I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in a second. If you wanna see the full video, click the link that pops up in your screen or the link down below in the description if you're joining us on a mobile device. Now on top of that, I got five more bonus videos that you're going to get from the Top Speed Golf System that are going to go over in more detail these things that we talked about today. And another thing that we talked about that has to do with power is the power turn. And I have a video 1.1 that's going to tell you how to increase your club head speed by getting that good full turn like we saw Frank doing, not only in the backswing, but in the downswing. You're going to get that video and then four more bonus videos. You get instant access to those. So I'll see you guys in the lag video. Go ahead and click that link. And I'll see you in all six of those videos that you're going to get free of charge. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button. That helps us to grow the channel. And remember to subscribe. That way you'll see our latest videos. Good luck to you guys. Have a lot of fun out there. And play some good golf. I'll see you soon. Hi, guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard. And in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're gonna try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. i do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag. 